Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And I want to give you a special welcome to this episode because it's going to be a shorty. I don't have that much to talk about because the winds have been gusting up around 24 miles per hour most of the day. So I didn't do much, but uh, I did find out something about my new controllers and uh, I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, in the meantime, I did have a question about controllers and this one in particular, and he wanted to know the name of it. Well, it's called a high-end type. That's the only name I can find on here, high-end type. And this is the one that came with that uh, resistor for with the um, uh, dump load because this system is supposed to have uh, the place to connect your uh, PMA in here and then these two outer ones here go to the resistor for dump load. So it has a dump load built into it. Um, when I first got it, I tried that and it, I couldn't tell if it was working or not, but uh, there's no specific settings on this thing so you can determine uh, what's what the solar input is compared to what the um, PMA input is. It's just, just a cheapo unit. So um, a lot of the units, uh, they don't allow you to hook both uh, wind and solar up to the same unit. But uh, this one did, and this is what it is. It's, it had 600 watts of solar and 600 watts of wind were allowed on this. So I couldn't use it <clears throat> once I got this PMA because this PMA is 1,685 watts. So that's a little over 1,085 watts more than what this controller would handle. So I had to go through my, and this is a second question, I had to go through the dump load because the, uh, that was the least expensive way to go at the time. Now, if, uh, if I had bought a Midnight Classic back then, I could have used the Midnight Classic to, um, to do the work of that uh, unit. But I, again, the Midnight Classic, you cannot hook both wind and solar to the same unit. It's either wind or solar to each unit. So that's where that stands. Now, uh, see 12.6 in the uh, batteries here, 12.6, uh, they about 12.7. It's fluctuating between 12.6, 12.7. Well, today, because I was inside all day and it was 96 degrees outside, um, it wasn't comfortable being in the cabin. So I ran the air conditioner and three ceiling fans all day long on this. I just shut off the air conditioner a little while ago because it was down to 70 degrees in there. And, uh, and it, that's 20 degrees lower than what it was outside. So it was real comfortable in the, in the cabin today, but uh, a little too comfortable. I took a couple of naps and uh, I got to laze off a little bit. So yeah, hey, what the heck? I love these new controllers. They are doing exactly what they should be doing and giving me all the power I need so that I can live comfortably. So, happy to have gotten this stuff. I know it was an expensive undertaking. And, uh, hey, trust me, it was a learning curve from the get-go. Buying all these cheap old controllers up there did absolutely nothing for me except get me this far. And uh, hey, they were working, but they weren't the best efficiency. Now I've got efficiency. And uh, I get up in the morning just before the sun comes up over the horizon out there. And uh, within one hour's time, my batteries go from 12.5 to 13.2 in one hour every morning with this new system set up. I love this way of setting the system up. It's just perfect. Now, 
it's going to get even better because I'm planning on putting in another set like this one. And uh, I'll have eight of the 305 watt panels running. And that's going to be uh, 2,400 watts plus. So figure 2,420 watts of input on solar going into those two controllers every day, all day, is going to be a really nice thing. All right. So all of these, um, I'm, I'll disconnect the racks completely. I'll pour a new slab up there by the... Uh, water tank and all of these will move up there and power the water tank and I'll put in a, a small battery room inside of the pump room area. Um, I already have one up there because I have a circulation pump running inside of the tank all day long while the sun is out and that keeps the water moving in there so that it doesn't stagnate and uh, I've uh, liked that process. Uh, you can see that in some of my older videos. Anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to answer those about that also. But yeah, that's a, that's a great um, thing set up there. And uh, once I put that new pump up there, it'll be a pressurized pump. It'll pressurize the water coming to the cabin. But right now, like I, I mentioned before, some of my faucets, like my outside hose bib here, is uh, gravity feed from that tank. And uh, some of them, um, the, the hose bib in the front and the sink in the front and the shower and uh, sinks inside, those are all pressurized by a motorhome um, pressure pump. But I have to listen to that pump run every time I turn the water on inside the cabin. So having a pump up there at the tank will eliminate that noise inside. And I'll have water pressure at all my faucets, including the one that I plan on trenching from the back of the cabin over here down through here over to my garden house and uh, I'll, I'll tee off of that and go over to my greenhouse so I'll have water faucets right there when I need them but I still have these storage tanks going all right so I did promise I would uh, do a walkthrough of the garden uh, speaking of gardens um, Pierre from heat seeker bus uh, had some pictures of his harvest because they had some frost that killed his tomato plants. And uh, my God, a whole bunch of tomatoes he got off of there. They're all, they're all green, but some of them should turn red as long as the star is on the bottom of them. And uh, we'll go from there. My cabbage is still producing. This is watermelon uh, right here. Of course, the uh, peaches and all of that, they're getting ready to go into dormancy. I still have one pair left on the tree here and uh, I'll let that go a little bit longer. And uh, my apricot tree here is uh, still too young to produce anything. Uh, Mandarin tangerine, too young, but uh, they're getting there. So my tomato plants, yep, I'm still getting flowers on the tomato plants. I'm still getting tomatoes on the tomato plant, as you can see, but they're getting smaller because we're not, uh, they're not getting enough of everything that they need. I've been neglecting this. And you see, I've, I've got the, the plants all tied up and, and that stuff, but there's a couple of broken branches in here from the high winds we've been having. And the grapevine still got grape leaves on it. And I found one bunch of grapes that was hanging that I had completely missed when I was picking all the grapes off of here. And boy, were those grapes good. They were super sweet, but they were already starting to ferment a little bit. And uh, I could taste that. They tasted a little bit like a, a very delicious sweet white wine. Delicious. So my uh, uh, eggplant here uh, is just like Nelly over in the chicken coop, not producing any eggs. But I've got an infestation of ants here. So I'll have to uh, get out my Murphy's oil soap and uh, take care of those ants. But, uh, you can see the cherry tomatoes are sprouting up and flowering since I uh, trimmed these all back. So I'll, I'll get more tomatoes yet this year off of this. Same thing over here. I got some uh, San Marzano's still on the, on the thing here with new flowers popping out. So, yep, those are uh, orange trees down there. And uh, I started those from seed last year. 
the grapevines, of course, they're, they're going to get pulled out and go back to Home Depot because they're $10 a piece. That's $20 I could use for something else. All of these uh, citrus got nailed by the heat wave that we had, but I'm trying to bring them back with water on a regular basis. It looks like they could use some more right now. Avocado tree, same thing. But uh, once I get the greenhouse going, I'll move that stuff into the greenhouse and uh, I'll have a little bit more climate control going in there. So these trees I started from seeds that I got out of some seed pods from a parking lot at a restaurant. And uh, they're doing really well. They're, they've already set root into the uh, desert ground. So I leave the uh, buckets on for right now, but as the soil works its way down um, and completely disappears with ground level, then I'll just uh, put a, slat, a slice down the, the uh, tubs and, and take those out of there. And then what I do is I just overlap them a little bit and I put some wire through them and just tie them off again and I can uh, uh, reuse these things for more trees later on. Uh, the uh, mulberries here, uh, they took a hit in the heat, but uh, they're coming back with uh, regular watering. My kale, it's almost time to make some kale soup. Uh, Portuguese call it caldine. And uh, it's, uh, it's made with uh, pork neck bone and potatoes and beans. And oh my God, is it good. And a Portuguese sausage called linguiça. And uh, I like the spicy one I, I add to it because it adds a little spice to the soup without getting overwhelming. But uh, really good stuff. That'll be coming up pretty soon. And uh, maybe I'll do a cooking show on that, show how it's made. And uh, yep, got fresh flowers coming out on these tomato plants over here. This pear tree is uh, getting ready to go into its dormant state. Got some fresh branches popped off of it. That pear tree, um, not even a flower off of it this year. So I'm gonna have to see what's going on with that. And uh, might end up having to uh, trim it back and then graft it and just use the, uh, the root stock to uh, grow some of those other pears. Yep. All right, so that was the walkthrough here. Oh yeah, here's my garlic. Uh, I picked the garlic and it's laying here so it's ready to go inside and, and, and be used. And they're small little cloves. I'll uh, restart some of those like I did in my video and get those back into the pot again and grow some more for next year. So, all right, that's where we stand right now. I, as soon as the uh, temperatures cool down, it's still well over 110 degrees in that uh, greenhouse um, in the mornings right now when the sun is out. So um, when that cools down a little bit more, I'll be getting into um, finishing the floor up in there and getting that ready for the winter time to grow some produce through the winter. All right, everybody. I said it was going to be a short one and I lied to you. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, appreciate you joining me on this uh, little episode and I'll be seeing you soon. And yeah, this is the time of day you got to keep your eye out here because all these little squirrel holes that are around here, the uh, Mojave green rattlesnakes like to uh, tuck themselves down in there and wait for a squirrel to come running at them and then just grab them. So you don't want to uh, have your ankles looking like uh, uh, squirrels with uh, Mojave green rattlesnakes around. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you stopping by and listening to me ramble on. And uh, again, any questions down below in the comment section, I appreciate them. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your subscriptions. G-Bear signing off.